The listening section has three parts. Part 1 For short conversations, each followed by one question. Part 2 One longer conversation, followed by four questions. Part 3 One lecture, followed by six questions. You will hear each conversation or lecture only one time. You must answer each question before continuing. To continue to the next question, click the next button. In this section, you cannot use the back button to return to an earlier question. The number of questions and the amount of time you have to answer the questions will be shown separately for each section in the question time left window on your screen. Time is not counted while you are listening to the conversation or lecture. Question 1. Are you going to pay the rent today? Oh, I did that the day before yesterday. What does the man mean? Question 2. Can Barry go camping with us this weekend? Oh, I don't think he's old enough. What does the woman mean? Question 3. Let's go to the movies right now. Sorry, I can't now. I have to finish the laundry. What does the man mean? Question 4. The weather here is always so wet. Yes, and I really don't like humid weather. What does the man mean? Listen to a conversation between a professor and a departmental secretary. Good morning, Estelle. Did you get those syllabus pages run off for me? Oh my gosh, I forgot them completely. Can you hang on for just about five minutes? Yes. No, actually, I'm glad you haven't run them off yet. I need to fix a typo in the original. I got the year wrong. This is 2009 now, isn't it? <laughs> yes, and it has been for the last two months. Can I change it for you? Oh, you'd better just give me back the original, Estelle. It's wrong in a couple of places, and it would be easier if I just went over it myself, I think. All right, then. Um, ah, here it is. Good. Uh, can I borrow your whiteout? Sure, here. Thanks. Is the chairman coming in this morning? He should be in about 11. He has a meeting with the dean first thing before that. About budget cuts, I'll bet. Probably. I hope I'm not one of them. Ah, don't you worry. You're irreplaceable. You're the heart of the department. <laughs> well, they do successful heart transplants now. Yeah, I suppose so. But anyway, I'm sure your job is more secure than mine. Assistant professors are a dime a dozen, and one more or less is not critical to operations. But no secretary? We'd be in chaos in a day. <laughs> Maybe. Here you are. It'll be okay with the penned in correction, I think. It doesn't need to be fancy. I only need 10 copies for this class. And then I'll revise it again for next term anyway. Whatever you say, I can do these in a minute. 
Shall I bring them down to your office? Yes, that would be... Oh, no, I have to run down to the reading room first, so I'll swing back and pick them up from you here. Okay, then. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it, have we still got some of those little A4 binders, the loose-leaf ones? Yes, some. How many do you need? Oh, um, six, I think. I want to break my introductory course into modules. Oh, just for you, then, not for all your students. Yes, we've got that many. What color would you like? Color? Yes, blue, navy, pink. Ack, pink. Well, some people like it. I suppose, not me. I'll take navy if you've got six of them. Just a minute. Uh, four, five, yes, I do. Here you are. Great. And, uh, the labels? Oh, labels. Uh, here. And a couple of extras, so you can make a mistake. Me? A mistake? Not a chance. Not a chance, eh? Got the year down pat now, have you? <laughs> okay, okay, you've got me. There goes your birthday rose, though. What? Oh, no. You really hold a grudge, don't you? Yeah, so watch out. And could you do just one more little thing for me? Maybe. Please? Could you just let me know when the chairman comes in? I need to talk to him for a minute. Just ring me. I'll be in my office from about 10.30 till lunchtime. Yes, of course. And I'll have your copies when you come back from the reading room. Great, thanks. Actually, just keep them here, and I'll pick them up when I see Dr. Jewett. Okay, then. Thanks, Estelle. Question 1. Question 2. Question 3. Question 4. Listen to part of a lecture from a marine biology class. You've been reading this month about food chains and food webs. Today we'll discuss these in relation to seafood. How many of you like seafood? Mmm, most of you. So do I. In fact, I'm on a seafood diet. I see food, I eat it. Haha, <laughs> get it? Okay. But seriously folks, today we're going to talk about trophic relationships in marine food chains and webs. Who can remind us what a trophic relationship is? Yes, Miss Lee. It's what an organism eats and uh, the things that eat that organism. Very good. Trophic relationships describe the relationship between producers and consumers, so they help us diagram food chains and food webs. Now, in marine ecosystems, like other ecosystems, Food is needed for matter, growth and reproduction, and for energy, 
metabolic processes within the body. Also, like other ecosystems, marine ecosystems have producers, consumers, and decomposers. The primary producers are autotrophic plankton. Autotrophic means these plankton can synthesize their own food. Autotrophs are consumed by heterotroph organisms. Hetero means other. So in this case, heterotrophic means organisms that can't synthesize their own food. They must rely on autotrophs for food energy. The primary consumers in marine food chains are the plant eaters, herbivores. And the secondary consumers are both the meat eaters, carnivores, and predators that eat both meat and plants, omnivores. The decomposers are heterotrophic bacteria, which get energy from body wastes and dead tissue, thus cycling it back to the producers. A simple marine food chain then might look like this. The top predator, trophic level number four, is a herring. Herring fish eat level three, carnivorous zooplankton. The carnivorous zooplankton eat trophic level 2, herbivorous zooplankton, and herbivorous zooplankton eat level number 1, photoplankton, which is a type of autotroph. In marine food chains, energy transfer is not very efficient. Photoplankton utilize only about 1% of the energy available from the sun. Between 70 and 90% of the energy made by producers or eaten by heterotrophs is used in their bodies or expelled as waste. This leaves only 10 to 30% that is retained in the body's biomass and available for consumers at the next highest trophic level. Thus, the biomass at each trophic level is controlled by the efficiency of the energy transfer. At the lowest trophic level, animals will generally have high biomass and there will be lots of small producers. At the highest trophic level, animals will generally have low biomass, and there will be only a few large animals. Now, let's expand our simple food chain into a food web. In this web, a herring is no longer a trophic four predator. There is a bigger fish, um, a tuna, that eats the herring, but there's even a bigger animal that eats the tuna. And that is... Us. Yes, and there's something else from the seas that will even eat us. Sharks. Correct. A food web is more complex than a food chain. And then there are gigantic animals like whale sharks and baleen whales that are herbivores and only eat plankton. But let's focus for a few moments on us. What are the implications of trophic levels for the fish we eat? Well... Looking at the fish harvest worldwide, 88% of the fish we catch are fish with fins, 8% are shellfish, and 4% are crustaceans. Fish caught in the open ocean, such as tuna, are high-level predators on an inefficient food chain. Fish caught in coastal waters, such as cod, herring, and haddock, are at the top end of shorter, more efficient food chains. This is because there's a high level of photoplankton, so consumers expend less energy catching food. These fish, then, provide more energy and better nutrition for us. In upswelling areas off the west coasts of America and Africa, the fish are even healthier. Here they are small, very efficient food chains, and the fish are small, fast-growing, eat lots of photoplankton, and travel in dense schools. Two examples of such fish are anchovies and sardines. Question 1 
Question 2. Question 3. Question 4. Question 5. 